today's episode of PJ and the Beard, we have a segment that we call From the Woodshed. And the Beard is going to tell you what we have from the woodshed. Yeah, so today, uh, Chris let us borrow his Freedman B-E-O-D pedal. Um, and these are pretty popular. This is kind of that, I don't know if it 100% qualifies as an amp in a box, but I think it, it's in that line, right? Like, mm-hmm. uh, Pat and I were talking about it. This is, if you are... This is kind of funny, but if you're one of those players that like goes and gets a back line provided for you, mm-hmm. um, the idea is you can take this pedal no matter what back line it is. You can kind of dial in that Friedman sound, right? Uh, the other way I think to look at it too is if you're one of those players that doesn't get back line provided for you, and maybe doesn't ever leave the basement, you know, like um, this is a good way to get in something like a Friedman sound without having to go mm-hmm. spend thousands of dollars on a Friedman amp. Right. And so the the joke that we have that we were talking about is um, I was watching an interview with Paul Reed Smith and somebody asked him, hey, are you ever going to build one of these kind of amp in the box type of pedals that gets us the sound of some of your high end PRSs for two, three hundred bucks? And Paul, Paul kind of laughed at the guy. He's like, um, no, like, why would I why would I take my all this money we have invested in these amps and put it in a two hundred dollar pedal for you? guys?" Right. So on the other hand. There's a lot of guys out there that can't afford to buy a $4,000, $5,000 Paul Reed Smith amp. A lot of guys out there can't afford Right, I'm not dropping that. Um, but could drop $200 on a pedal to kind of do... So he might, be missing a, he might be missing a market that wouldn't really hurt the other market. Right. So. It would be almost his SE version of one of his amps. Yes. <laughs> so. Uh, anyway, so what do you think? Friedman, uh, Pat's going to run through... This is this is more his style. Uh, running joke: if it has more than three knobs, I, it's above me. So this one is difficult. Six knobs. Six knobs. This one. This one's difficult for us. So I think the the plan here is this: uh, we may have already shot this video and just decided, well, <laughs> it was bad. <laughs> we don't edit much, and it required a lot of editing, and it was still awful. And we're not even talking about the playing. Yeah. It's just the way we rambled, which we're on the verge of that again. But it was nothing like that. So what no, we're going to do, yeah. we're going to leave everything that you see at 50 at 50, gains at zero, volume is kind of at a reasonable, manageable volume for how loud the amp is and stuff like that. We're going to run the gain knob, so run around the clock. We'll start, it's down at like, what, 7 o'clock now. We'll probably bump it up to 11, then maybe bump it up to 1 or 2, and then maybe go all the way. We're gonna so rock, rock around the clock. Rock around the clock with the gain uh, and then we're going to come back and we're just going to run through each of the other knobs. So you have bass here, treble here, presence, and tight. And what we're finding is all of these knobs are really, really sensitive. Sensitive. So they, dynamic. Right. They do stuff. Yeah. So what we're trying to give you with this quick demo of this pedal is just, here's what it does. Here are the settings and here's how sensitive or dynamic each one of those are. Not necessarily, a lot of times we go for dialing how we would use it. This one we're kind of going for... This is what it does. This is what it does. So. Uh, the Beard's uh, 2000 McCarty. Uh, split coils. I may get to that. PV Classic 30. MXR. Um, my gosh, I keep drawing a blank. Carbon copy. Carbon copy. It was broken and he fixed it for me. So it's been out of the, out of circulation for a while. So carbon copy. Uh, with the reference tone of... Uh, I'm going to go bridge because this is... <laughs> on about four so it's on the edge if i hit it right just so you know because when you see just you'll see <laughs> gain at zero here yeah, we gain go at zero
thing's gonna have to go see Jenny Craig because it is fat. <laughs> 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 it it has a lot. I mean, it has some game. Yeah, it does. Where did any spot jump out at you where you want to put it? I'm a dime kind of guy, but a dime was a bit much. I mean, I think uh, if I have to remember, maybe two o'clock was kind of sweet. I thought maybe. So like right. And we did it gradually, but uh, let me just see that quick. Yeah, I think it's got some overtones to it, some drive to it. It's a little his his tastic. All right, so this time. Playing the same thing, yep. but I'm going to start at the bass, go to the treble, go to the presence, go to the tight. I'm going to take bass all the way off. Middle. Full. Yeah. And we'll do that through each one. That will give you a really good idea of how these... And I'm not going to change anything here. So we'll probably just go full on humbucker the whole way. Because if not, we have too many variables. Right. All right. Reduce the variables, I see. Yes, yes, yes. Says the scientist. Here we go. <laughs> rolling that volume up it's all peak over yeah. like right away like it's it got arena rock down here um yeah man i don't know that i've ever encountered a pedal and there's a few back there that the knobs i think dynamic is better sensitive and dynamic i can't figure out which is a better word but my goodness like when you rolled the treble all the way back it sounded like like am like like when you do the whole megaphone with the vocal uh, I don't know, man, if you can't find a tone, I mean, it's very gainy, right? So it might not be everybody's cup of tea. But if, if you like a little bit of gain, well, a lot of gain, and you can't dial in a tone, you're probably right. chasing a tone you'll never find because there's just so much. I mean, I'm looking. Knobs. I'm kind of. We've we've been on that like fuzz journey because yeah. neither one of us were real fuzz no. lovers. So we've been looking at a bunch of fuzz pedals, and so now I'm kind of like. Another thing that I never really looked at is what's in between. What's between the overdrives that we've been using forever and the fuzz? Like what happens? Distortion's another distortion, thing, right? Yeah. yeah this and is, so, um, I mean, I might like to find one with three knobs on it, but you're <laughs> we could just set a couple of them just flat and just leave them like we started in the beginning. Um, but yeah, I mean, you're right. This is like that tight. Made a huge... I mean, you did. It, it felt like when you rolled it back, it was starting to flub out or something, and then you could pull it up, and it got real yeah, uh, focused. So it's it's quite a pedal. It is, and this one is uh, pre-owned, and it's probably going to be mine. 
Because <laughs> Lord knows I need more game. <laughs> Patrick needs more game. That's right. I'm a gamiac. So, um, Friedman, B E O D. Uh, what are your thoughts, I guess? What are your thoughts on that? Have you had any experience with Friedman amps? Have you had any experience with the Friedman pedals? Uh, do you like six knobs versus three? <laughs> Was it just me that likes three knobs? Um, whatever in the comments. Uh, please subscribe, stick around, and uh, we have a lot more coming. And I think with that... I'm still in stun mode. <laughs> it was loud, and it's going to get loud again. So this is PJ on behalf of The Beard reminding you, no matter what you hear, you never have too much, much fun. <laughs>